Hello, this is Stefan Marek from Conductor, and welcome to this introduction to Schema Registry. This is a Conductor hands-on. So my full stack cafe cluster is now created. What I'm going to do is now set up Conductor to be leveraging the Schema Registry, and then we'll be able to use the Avro data format, for example, for our hands-on. So let's create a new cafe cluster, and I'll call this one full stack Kafka cluster. The bootstrap server is still localhost 9092, and we can test the Kafka connectivity to make sure that things are working, which is great. But other things we can do, so we'll set up a new color, maybe as yellow. We can set up the schema registry. And so the schema registry is at HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8081. Then when we're done, you test the schema registry connectivity. And if you see an OK, then we're good to go. I'm going to save this cluster. We'll be editing the cluster configuration later on when we add Kafka Connect and so on. But for now, let's open this yellow cluster to connect to Kafka using the schema registry. And so we are connected into our cluster. And as you can see here, we have already a lot more things being created. So we have seven topics, 84 partitions, one broker, and then we have the schema registry menu here that just opened up. So if we go very quickly to our topics, we see, and we're going to show all the topics here, we see a lot more internal topics for Kafka, as well as some configurations. So this is due to the fact that we have started the schema registry, which has the underscore schemas topic. We have started Kafka Connect, which shows the Kafka Connect topics. And we started KSQL DB, which shows this topic right here. And because uh, all this tag starts consumers, then we have the consumer offsets topics already created as well. But no need to worry about it. This is just for me to show you why some topics were created in the first place in this example. So in the topics, we're going to create our first topic for Avro. So I'm going to create a new topic, and I'll call it my first topic, Avro. And it's very good to say dot .avro or dash .avro just to specify that a Kafka uh, topic is using the Avro format because it will be good metadata when you have a lot of topics in your Kafka cluster. So we have three partitions, and the replication factor has to be one because we only have one Kafka broker, and this is to keep things light. So we're going to create this topic, and here we go. We have created our first topic, which does not contain any Avro data yet, but it is named .avro to make things a little bit more obvious. So next thing we have to do is to create a schema for this topic. And so to do so, we're going to go into the schema registry, and what I'm going to do is to create a new schema. So we're going to create a subject, and as you can see, we can say the format we have for our data. So do we want Avro? Do we want Protobuf? Or do we want JSON? And based on what we select, well, the schema, uh, sample schema we're going to create for you is going to be different. But so in this example, we're going to use Avro. And I'm not going to do a course on Avro, but um, you can check it out online. But I want to show you just a small introduction to it in this lecture. In terms of naming strategy, what I recommend right now is to use topic name as a strategy. And then are we sending a key or a value schema? Well, we're sending a value schema right here, so I'm going to select value, okay? So the top, the, the subject of the schema registry we're creating right now is for Avro, and we're going to send a value schema for the topic name. So here we go. I'm going to select the topic, my first topic dot Avro. And here we can edit this Avro schema. So we have two, uh, we have one field right now, which is ID long, okay? But if I add a comma and then I want to create a new field, so I'm going to say the field is going to be name and then we'll just have maybe name as the name of the topic, of the, of the field, sorry. And then the type is going to be string. And we'll close the brackets and this gives me a valid Avro schema. So I'm going to create this and we have created our first Avro schema. So my first topic dot Avro dash value. And because this is an a, a Avro schema for the value, we can see that the record is named my record and it has two fields. So if I click on it, we can see that the two fields we have is ID as a long and name as a string. So this is our first schema for our data. Okay, next thing we have to do is start producing some data to our topic using this schema. So to do so, I'm going to create a producer. And this producer is going to be sending data to our myfirsttopic.avro. We need to set a value for the serializer. And so 
we're going to choose Avro from the schema registry as the serializer for our values. So this Avro appeared here and it was not here before because we have set up the schema registry in our Kafka cluster configuration. Okay, so I'm going to pick an Avro strategy, which is the topic name strategy. And then we can click on view schema right here to make sure that everything is correct. And yes, the schema is correct here. Okay, so now we must paste the Avro content in JSON format. So we need to create a JSON and the ID field is going to be a long, so we can say nine. And then the name field is going to be Stefan. And here we go. So now if I click on send, this is going to send some data into my Avro topic and it was successful. But as we can see, let's say for example that we are sending some data, but ID is going to be full bar. So we're going to send a string for ID. Let's try to click on send. And as you can see, we get an error saying that the field ID is expected to be of type long. So well, when we have a Kafka topic with no schema registry, we can send whatever kind of data we want into the Kafka topic and possibly break the schemas. When using the schema registry, anytime we send data that is missing a field or that the field type is wrong or whatever, we're going to get an error. So this kind is saying, hey, you're sending a string to my field ID, but I want it along. So this is not working. So let's try to forget to send the ID field as well. I'm going to send again and it's saying, hey, there is no default value and you're not setting the field ID. So again, there is an error. So by the way, let's just show you something. So when there is an error in conductor, well, not this kind of errors because they're user-based errors, but when there is an error in conductor, if you think this is a bug, you can send us a message to the support and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And we love user feedback. So hopefully this is something that you appreciate as well. Okay, so we're good to go. So now let's have ID to be 10 and the name to be, for example, like John. So let's choose John right here and send the data. Okay, so the data has been sent into my Avro topic. I'm going to start a consumer now, okay, to read the data from this Avro topic. So we try to be smart and I will show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to select a topic to consume, which is my first topic, Avro. And we try to be smart because when we detect that a topic is Avro format, we automatically set the value and the key deserializer to be of type Avro if relevant. So this looks good. So let's click on start and we're going to read from the beginning of the topic. Click on start. And here we go. We are seeing the Avro data being read to us. So fairly cool. And if I click on a message, for example, on this message and click on details, as we can see, the data is represented to us in JSON form, even though it is stored in Avro. And if I click on value schema, we get some information around the schema that was used to deserialize this data. So really, really good. And another little cool feature I want to show you for our consumer is that if you are using Avro or JSON, you can do a value projection. So that means that if you want to just extract some value from this data, you can just do, for example, dot name. And dot name, what this will do is that it will just extract the name of the data itself. So let's run the consumer again, but we do a value projection dot name. Click on start and we're just getting John and Stefan as a result, which is really, really handy. So we hope you like this. It is very helpful for many of our users. Okay, so now let's go back into our little schema registry window. So we have the information around the schema that you can view in here, but the schema registry is also made to update and evolve schemas over time. And so we can do this directly from conductor. So I want to show you something. So when you have a new schema in conductor, there is a compatibility level. And right now it is set to default, but you can change the compatibility level on the right hand side to set any of these compatibility levels. So the documentation is here and I don't want to dwell too long into how these work, okay? But just so you know, you have can read the documentation right here and you can change the compatibility directly from conductor. You can also check the compatibility of a new schema. So if we take this one, paste it and we want to update it, for example, we want to add a field. So let me add, for example, the age field. So I'm going to say uh, name is age and the type 
is int. And we want to check this, okay? So this new schema, because we want to add the age field to our record, so it is forward compatible, it is forward transitive, it is not full and full transitive, and it is not backward and backward transitive. So how to make it transitive? You have to set up a default value. So you say default and then zero, and this gives you full compatibility. So this is something specific to Avro, but at least we are testing the compatibility for you from within Conductor. So similarly, I'm just going to cut this. If you're trying to remove a field, for example, if you want to remove the name field, this is going to be a backward compatible change, but this is not forward, not forward transitive, and not full, and not full transitive. So again, very handy to test your uh, new schemas directly from within Conductor. So when you're happy with the schema, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to update the schema for my Avro topic and click on Update. And now this gives me schema version 2 in my topic. And we can click here to show the differences and to view what has been added versus schema number one. So again, a very handy feature if you want to have many, if you have many different subject and schema versions in schema registry and want to compare the differences every single time. And so now when we have set up this, what we can do again is to start a producer and we can start producing to the same topic as before. So this one is going to be Avro and I can just very quickly say ID is 11. The name is Alice and the age is 32. And then send this data. And no schemas found, obviously, because we need to say a schema uh, strategy. So here we go. Click on send. The schema has been found. And now if I start a consumer and read the data for my topic using Avro from the beginning, click start. We're seeing, oh, and there's a projection. So let me remove this projection right here. Click on start. As we can see now, we can see that the age is showing up as well in our consumer, which is great. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you liked it. And I hope you learned a lot about schema registries and schemas and Avro in Conductor. And I will see you in the next lecture.